We are live. Hi, Peter. Hi, how's it going? Um, great. So, yes, we have first um, comment from AJ. Hello, Peter, how are you? Good, excellent. Doing fantastic. Looking forward to doing some of the little drawing of a commission here right now. Yes, we received several commissions that mm. were purchased yesterday and more stuff coming in today. Okay. So yeah, I'm excited to see Peter's live drawing, just like what will we'll, um, how we will project your um, drawing to yeah. the TV in Comic Con, right? Right, exactly. Awesome. All right, so I'll take you from here. Okay. All right, cool, excellent. Just setting everything up. Uh, welcome everyone who's able to join with me at the moment. I'm gonna start up drawing a commission. And so we got about half an hour just to begin. So the title of the commission that I have on the list says, um, related to the process of learning and personal growth or personal growth, which I thought was an interesting commission because it's not as straightforward as draw me this kind of character or creature or whatever the case is. It's very um, open in terms of its you know, idea. So the visual, I, I had to think about it for a little bit because I got the request about a day ago. I didn't sketch anything out, didn't do any thumbnail, uh, but that was the request, a commission based on something related to the process of learning or personal growth. For me, my mind and where it went kind of directly went into the idea of travel and the idea of observation, looking at many things. Because for me, how I tend to grow a lot and especially you know, learn from the things around me is from nature, really. So even in this year with lockdown, you know, I've been able to do a couple of trips, road trips to, you know, natural environments, parks, forests, and stuff like this. I to take a lot of photographs and draw and sketch. And um, this is something I would actively do as much as possible. So the image that I kind of had in mind was an idea of a character also observing and drawing as well, too. However, I also wanted to give this story where people tend to kind of focus on things when they should be paying attention to something else, you know? So the character I'm gonna have is gonna be looking and focusing on something very hard, but the idea that it's gonna be something that he should be also be paying attention to. And in life, I think it's important that we kind of step back a little bit and maybe look at the big picture and not hyper-focus on small things. Uh, so the image gonna go, is going to relate on that specifically. So let's go down to, uh, to our camera. So I'm gonna switch it over in one second. Apologies, I just have to hook it up real fast. Is that working? Is that not working? Hold on, let me get my mm, not, screen. There we go. Okay. Yep, working. Sorry about that slight delay. And uh, we have the overhead cam right now. Hopefully it's light enough. I'll bring in the light down just a bit more. And I will zoom in ever so much. Okay, we're just drawing on watercolor paper, cold press. I'm gonna be using uh, a pen that is actually, it was a blank, there was nothing in it. It was just a felt piece. And I actually showed this on a live stream recently. I believe it's made by the Kurataki company. And uh, I believe it's just a felt tip pen and you can fill it with any kind of ink or watercolor that you want to. So uh, with this one, I'll be using as a baseline. I might also use a combination of my fountain pens as well. So the idea is I'm going to have a character, hold on a second, it's got a little bit. Character can be placed in right about here. I want to put in another individual, maybe like the creature or kind of animal that he's looking at on this side. So I want this read of like a, a small, medium, large effect. So in the background, there's gonna be like another big creature, like look, looking at him. So we'll start with the character first with the core line right about here. And what I'll do is just begin. I'm just gonna put some glasses on his head first. He's not gonna wear it, but he'll put it on his head. You know what, I wanna switch it over to this fountain pen because the line on this one's a little bit heavy. So I'll be using that mainly for um, pushing in lime weights and darks. Now, if I do read a couple of uh, questions over here, I'll definitely try to answer them. So Jojo is asking, is it okay to ask questions? It is, because I can actually read your guys' chat system, because I have the um, 
YouTube video live stream next to me right here. So if you guys do have a couple of questions that pop up, I don't mind answering a few of them. I'll try my best. We only have a half an hour, so it's gonna go really quickly. At the very least, we'll be able to start this sketch or start the commission that is. Cause I'll be doing a full watercolor on this afterwards. Here, as his head comes down. I've been doing this series of uh, illustrations and sketches in a sketchbook that relates to the idea of someone uh, venturing into new worlds, a territory, a landscape that's unfamiliar, like an alien, and he's documenting all this information. So I kind of have that kind of character in mind where he's also essentially gathering data, information, essentially an extension of me, right? <laughs> And of course, welcome you guys, I appreciate that. That I finished Cyberpunk. I actually have been playing that game recently uh, and I've actually been enjoying it. I got the PC version. So I've been running on, on a pretty good machine so far right now. So it looks great to me, but I have not finished it. It's gonna be quite the endeavor. It's quite a big game from what I can tell with all the size stuff and everything. But I know there are a lot of you know complaints and such, but we don't need to get into that. <laughs> put his hair up here. Especially with this kind of image, I don't want to be like super cartoony, but I do like more of the stylized approach in this method. Uh, I don't really tend to draw super realistic stuff anyways, unless it's more from study of life for my dynamic sketching methods, which try to, tries to capture, you know, things like value, texture, patching, lighting, all that kind of stuff. But uh, for this one, I like to play around. So the slight, slight stylization is something I enjoy. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. I kind of had this visual of him having like this massive like backpack, all that kind of stuff. When we get to the questions in just a second, I just wanna establish this first, just to get things going. And as I have him in place, I'm also gonna start the uh, thing he's focusing on because his sketchbook, his book, that he's writing down notes is going to be up here. There's going to be an animal, some kind of creature down over here. So questions. Um, <clears throat> How long have I been drawing? And did, did I go to art school? I did. Uh, I started, well, I started drawing when I was just a kid, you know, around like five or 10 years old, uh, seriously drawing. You know, once I got into high school, I was very much committed to it. But in terms of like formally training, uh, I did go to art center in Pasadena. Uh, and that school obviously gave me a lot of great information educationally, but it really gave me a lot more connections to people, which is a big part of what I really wanted to have, uh, networking connections, that kind of stuff. And then um, after I finished up school, of course, you know, kind of working uh, in the industry, I mainly worked in entertainment design for games and concept art. Uh, from there, you know, especially I started teaching a lot more, I actually gained more knowledge. So teaching became a huge aspect of my uh, personal growth as well, too. And the more I taught, the more I verbalized the way I was doing certain things, I got a better understanding as to how to approach it. So it was there's never a point in my life where I wasn't learning something. So was, I'm always kind of in school in a lot of ways. Like even right now, we just finished up the live stream with Carl and Vic and you know, Eliza. And I learned so much from them. I'm just kind of watching and, and also listening. And as I was also creating, I was paying attention to what they were doing uh, because it's such an opportunity and a privilege to be able to draw and sit next to them. Um, and to watch that happen live is, is, you know, a rarity. It doesn't happen every day. So I'm always going to take every chance to kind of learn as much as possible because those people have so much incredible skill and I respect what they do so much. And that, of course, not just them, but a lot of other art artists that are, that are out there, they may not even be around anymore. So doing things like master copy still and looking through books and inspirations are, are, is never ending. So a uh, question, can, can drawing everyday objects help you to draw people in any way? It actually kind of can. And the reason why is because when you draw everyday objects, you get a better understanding of scale. 
how to properly draw scale, but also control a proportion because everything that you draw has a sense of its own proportion. Uh, so you should be studying many things of different types because it helps also diversify uh, your ability to visualize. Like for instance, you know, yeah, I'm drawing a character, but in this character, you know, I'm gonna draw many other things, you know, from his props to his clothing, to, you know, whatever the case is. Uh, and in that situation, I gotta be able to, you know, have a lot of skills on being able to visualize things around me. Um, so for sure, I think doing a lot of study of everyday objects can be very helpful. Let's see if some other questions here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna kind of skip down a little bit. So I've seen some questions, but I'm gonna try to find a way to relate, relate to this. Uh, stick to an art style. Is there a way to, you know, advice to stick to that? Well, I think, think about the medium and think about your audience. Like imagine if, if you were being sold something, what, what do you find interesting, right? Uh, you tend to gravitate towards a certain style set that you find that peaks and, and kind of like grabs you a little bit. So I think also thinking about like who your audience or who your, um, I guess, like-minded people might be that have the same interest to you is what you want to stick with in that sense situation, right? So the medium is important, like what kind of uh, pr product are you making? Is it gonna be like a comic? Is it gonna, you know, again, you can visualize it as like a, a series of a cartoon or a movie. And I'm saying that you're literally making that thing, but you can think of it that way. So then if you're gonna make something like that, who would you think would want to see it, right? And so then the art style may be appropriate to then the audience uh, because you know that's gonna be also something similar to what you like. So it's definitely stay there. Um, question again is, I draw every day, but the amount of time varies and can be just an hour. Is there any tips to get those numbers up? So in those situations, in the very beginning, uh, you got to press through, okay? If you feel like a little bit tired in the beginning, it's like, oh man, I've drawn an hour now, I'm kind of done. Uh, you got to press through and do more. Now, if you've gone like a week and you've been drawing like every day and at a certain point after a couple of days, you're like, man, I'm kind of tired now, you know, and I feel a bit strained. In that situation, then I would take a break and like take, take a day off or a couple hours off or do something else entirely, find some other interest to kind of pull you back in. So, but in the beginning, when you feel any sort of like strain or frustration or struggle, you got to just sit and do it, push through more. I've done an hour, you know, what? I want to keep going more because maybe this is my first day of the week, really getting into the practice and fundamentals. Uh, and if you don't stick with it and overcome that hurdle of just maybe even stress, of uh, frustration, the struggle to actually visualize certain things, uh, then it'll always happen that way. You'll have a constant chugging, like stop and go, stop and go. Well, you just need to kind of barrel through it sometimes, you know. A couple of questions here. I'm gonna move down a little bit. Do you think it is possible to learn everything when it comes to art such as, uh, do you need to know about the Loomis method method or the Riley head method? You can definitely expose yourself to all those, especially within a certain technique and method. Uh, because, you know, some of those are not necessarily, you're not going to master them per se, but you can definitely get the idea of what you're trying to do. And, you know, going through classes, going through books and formats to expose you to the information, you can definitely understand what they're trying to go for. But will you really truly master it? I don't know if that's the right word. Will, you, will I say, like, will you truly fully adapt it into the process that you have? That will take time. But in that time, you'll start to then gravitate towards one that you find to be the most, uh, I guess, maybe visually, not even visually, but method-wise, attuned with what you really want to go for, you know? I want to start the creature down over here. It's going to be like some kind of uh, animal. It's going to be like a baby or something like this. Down over here. It's going to have like a big mouth. Let's keep going to the questions. Uh, the pen that I'm using right now is a Sailor 1911 fountain pen right here. Uh, how do you know how much short learning, uh, short or shortening should happen depending on the length of the object? So that's where a little bit of subjective kind of choices and decisions have to be made where you can stylize that foreshortening very immensely. Uh, and of course, get away with it because of that foreshortening being very stylized. But you can also look at references in the photographs by taking your actual own photos in that situation, you might also get a strong visual that you can follow. So you can just assume and guess, but really you have to see the actual thing. So I would re really get into the habit 
of not only like researching things for online of, of information or visuals that are you know close to what you're trying to get to let's say from that situation but also gather your own references put yourself in a position or have someone like a family member or a friend uh borrow them and like say hey can you hold your arm out like that and i want to take a photograph and use that as a reference you know but the good way to judge it is to see it now there are of course some things that you cannot visually see because maybe they don't exist but that's why you would take something that equates to it that's parallel and uh, use it as an inspiration or reference to just draw from. Um, Peter, another question from SF. Would you yeah. recommend beginners to start with making shapes and values, line drawing, or construct form and try to understand drawing in space? I would say drawing in space first. Uh, get a sense of its proportion, uh, form language, um, you know, accuracy within all those structures initially before you go into the value, uh, that area of space of value. Yeah, the value is really highly important once you get to that area of direction of painting, but in the initial creation of composition or whatever you're going for, I think first structuring it is gonna be the best bet. Especially if you wanna like train, um, painting can be a little bit overwhelming for some people in the very beginning. So I think starting with drawing, well, drawing can be too, I understand, but if you're just focusing on towards the idea of shapes, it, it feels a bit more manageable uh, especially in the format that I kind of go for in my classes where, yeah, we draw many different things, but the idea is to, again, try to release the idea of heavy details. And with painting, there's just so much actual material process to go through from mixing the paints and all the setup. It's very time consuming. Where drawing, you can just kind of pick up a pen or a pencil and just start going at it. Um, so, but definitely forms and shapes initially. Uh, I have a couple questions, one from Alan is, what's my dream project? Well, for me, it's one I'm doing at the moment already. Uh, my graphic novel, The Blacksmith, is a project that I really enjoy creating as a comic, but I already had a lot of big, bigger pictures of ideas of what it could be. And I thought of it as something that could have been like um, a movie project, a TV series, which may never happen, but uh, I like the idea that maybe I can explore that, you know? But something that I can create that goes onto a screen would be something I would love. I'm gonna put a lot of vegetation and stuff around him. Little grotesque little creature, but actually the one that's gonna stand above him is gonna be like the, the parent version of it. And he's gonna feel even more grotesque. He's like rummaging through little vegetation over here, looking for food sources. Kind of a mix of it between like a, I was thinking a bat and a koala bear and <laughs> a mixture of different kind of animals here. some kind of primate maybe too. All right, Peter, another yeah. question from Nudes Week. It's storytelling one of the most important thing for an artist? It's everything. Uh, the things that we learn about in fundamentals are just the tools that are always then applied towards the idea of storytelling. Uh, and that's our job, especially in the field that you wanna work in for what we do entertainment design or maybe like even illustration, honestly, too. The idea is it, it, you're trying to connect to some sort of viewer or audience in front of you. So storytelling is, is a part of that, right? It started from the beginning of time where someone who would, you know, have experiences of observation, this, the hunts and, you know, the people, the hierarchy, whatever the case is, and they would tell us stories about it, the generational, you know, passing of it. And that's still kind of what we're doing. Yeah, we can use our imagination and, and generate worlds, but we're still taking storylines of, things that we all relate to as human beings. So without story, I mean, yeah, you can do serialistic art or fine art and make statements and such, but it's still some sort of communication, a visual to maybe an idea. Uh, and from that, which is why you know people tend to focus heavy on technique. Yeah, your technique can be great, but if you have no ideas, if you got no stories, it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, so for sure, where do you then pull your stories from? Life, living, getting out there, making connections, uh, you know, if you don't do anything, if you just stay in your room all day, which right now most people might be. Um, but yeah, again, if you're younger and you might not have that many crazy stories of traveling and going around, but hopefully you will. And definitely take advantage of it. I know some people are like, well, I'll travel when I'm older. You know, I'm going to work hard right now, get a job and I'll save up and then, and then I'll have fun. It's like, that's ridiculous. Have fun now, you know, uh, make good money, have a good job and also travel and see the world around you when things start to open up more. 
uh, I think that's the way to go about it. Cause you know, I'm, I'm 39 right now. And, you know, I worked so hard during the times when I was in school and in college and stuff like that. And I don't regret it, but I do wish that that time when I was even younger, I, I did venture out more. I did go see a lot more things, but I'm making up for it at the moment. So in the last couple of years, I've been traveling all around, uh, looking at things in nature, but also seeing different cultures, meeting new people, you know, teaching and working all at the same time. So I think that's the huge part of, about storytelling, living. There's going to be some more vegetation over here. It's kind of hidden behind some grasses and such, which I'll paint up. Uh, would you agree on learning perspective first so you can build the rest of it from there? From Glenn, yes, I would. Starting with perspective is fantastic, but some people don't always start with perspective. Some people will start with things like the figure, uh, you know, still life, which will incorporate perspective at some point. But the thing is, you can't learn everything all at one time. You can take multiple classes. But um, like I said, you have to find a balance towards it where you take one extension to another one. But uh, you got to keep going and, and take more as you go and keep readapting it, re-implementing it, even taking some classes over again. Put a rock form over here. What's the difference between storytelling from an illustrator uh, POV and a comic and manga storyboard or POV? Well, of course, if the illustrator is creating a single image, right? that single image is the piece that we should tell the story. And if we look at paintings, even classical, of course, they have stories as well, right? Um, so we, we will learn from those masters, especially with an educational format. And as you do things like master copies from them, and if you have certain themes or settings or worlds or uh, whatever the case may be, I mean, that's the part where the single image hopefully tells it the best. But then we use combination of things like the figure, the pose, uh, from the perspective and of course the composition, then we add more elements of the cultural elements, um, the personality of the people themselves. In a lot of ways, you're still designing. You know, you're still designing the image itself. Whereas storyboarding, a manga in whatever case is comics, it's a series of images that tells you know, a story that goes through however long. Peter, we have about seven minutes to go. Okay, no problem. I've got a pretty good start on this one right now. And if anybody has any last couple of questions, I'm gonna to try to read through, but again, when, we, when you go through the chat, it goes through so quickly. So I'm missing a bunch of them, so I do apologize. Uh, I'm not trying to. Uh, how did you learn drawing from the imagination? Like, what are you doing right now? Well, it pulls from experience of life of my own uh, as I have traveled the world and seen things and the natural world to different parts of wherever, uh, that experience alone has given me a lot of just information visually, but also storytelling wise to create from the imagination. So to stimulate that muscle, you can't just pull from nothing, right? You, you have to fill it with a bunch of just experiences of things that you've, you've gathered around you. So having a strong observation skill set, but then also um, being curious about many of the things around you too, of not just looking at it, but wanting to know more about it. So reading or researching, looking at images and taking photographs and drawing all at the same time is an aspect that all, I think, storytellers should be active to. And if you're not, well, hopefully you'll start to work into it um, because, of course, you can't be perfect and do everything at the very beginning, right? Obviously. Uh, but that kind of stuff, even for me, it took time to really gain momentum and strengthen and also get familiar to. There's going to be a creature now above and back. And before we kind of finish off, what I want to do is start establishing him is gonna be way back over here, really big piece of a creature. He's gonna be like way up here. This idea, the initial premise was uh, for the commission was, let me read it again, related to the process of learning or personal growth. And the idea of personal growth for me was looking at the world all around you, but you know, um, paying attention 
to the bigger picture, as I mentioned in the beginning, and not hyper-focusing on the thing that you think you should be looking at. And you, got, you might have to pay attention because there might be other dangers around you, right? Or things that you should be paying attention to. So we just have a last couple minutes left. I'm gonna just really quickly put this guy in here in terms of the face. He's gonna go here. He's gonna have a bunch of bushy hair coming off the side of it. The big mouth. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, what do you think it's the most important for an artist when he starts creating his ideas and wants to find his style? Don't worry about the style. Uh, focus more on just interests that you have, uh, interests within certain mediums, things you want to create, and the idea of just being able to sit there and enjoy the process of doing it and not worrying so much about the way it needs to fit a certain style set because style will come into play more when you actually have to create real products or when you work for a company because then they'll establish that style guide. Now, you can be interested in style and you can explore it and, and imitate it and try to harness it, uh, but I don't think it's going to necessarily make that a priority. You know, It's just a natural part of your learning as you continue on. So definitely don't worry about those things. It's very common for most people to focus on that, which I'm not gonna say I didn't either. You know, For sure, style was very important and things I was curious about and wanted to grow more. But eventually over time, you know, again, like I said, overworking and whatnot, you start to realize what is more important, which is about maintaining that understanding of integrity of what you really wanna do for yourself and not trying to fit to a style for something else. Uh, or following certain trends, which again, I'm not saying that's a wrong thing either, but uh, at a certain point in time, I think it's also important to make sure you stick with the things that you just find interesting for yourself and you'll do it for yourself, not for anybody else. Awesome. So I think we have um, time for one or two questions. Okay. Uh, what is your preferred media? Yeah, my preferred medium is mainly ink. And the reason why that is because of the class that I took at Art Center with my mentor, Norm, which is the class that I teach now. It forced us to draw with felt tip pens in the world around us because we had to commit to the drawing, build confidence with our line economy. Uh, and, and so that we can just really repeat as much as possible because we're gonna make mistakes. And as we made a mistake, we learned more from them and that we increased the heavy mileage of drawing from that. From there, it's also watercolor. Um, from Domo, no, from Stevie. Um, do you have, um, do you stream on other platform? Yeah, I also stream on Twitch. Uh, it's just under Peter Han style. If you just search for that, you should be able to find it. I do streams once a week, usually try to, maybe once every other week. Um, they're about two hours in session and I do take a lot of questions like this and I'll draw and sketch. They're usually drawings of things that I need to create at the time or just for fun. And so anybody is welcome to join that, they're free. Uh, there is a, a subscription that you can join afterwards if you want to watch the past episodes, but you can always just watch the live ones anytime you want to from there. See, so I, I start to jump around quite a bit, actually. <laughs> and this is kind of like placing in landmarks where everything is going to go. And um, once I get the idea of it, then I fill everything in between it. I also don't try to hyper-focus on one part too long or else I overwork it. It's a mistake that I make a lot, a lot of the times. I overwork things or I put too much information or too much line. So I'm always looking for a way to balance that um, because I still make a lot of mistakes myself. Still growing, still learning, still have much to go to, especially with a lot of the artists you guys are seeing for this Super Ronnie Khan. I'm sure you guys are seeing guys like, you know, Carl and Kim Jong-gi and who and I, and you look at them and you're like, man, you just, incredible and I look up to those people too because again they're far beyond where I'm still at and uh, I'm not, not young but I still like I feel like I have a time to be able to progress and catch up you know but hopefully I will if I keep going the way I am and definitely of course thank you guys all for supporting Superani and Kazone and being a part of this uh, with the other artists who are here especially during these times, you guys kind of, you know, have to stay indoors all day. So hopefully something like this kind of breaks up your day-to-day -day routine, gives you more inspiration. Um, and 
you know, just supporting the artists that are also producing their own stuff. They don't really work for companies and studios. Like I'm just independent. Uh, so when people are doing, you know, requests of commissions like this, it helps me a lot. And um, so, yeah, appreciate you guys. Yeah, um, from supernius.com, when you guys go to commission, you guys can see some samples of Peter's commission. Um, we also have new merch drop. So if you guys click on merch and we have um, his newly released book, that's his first book um, been published with Super Any. Um, it's on its way from Korea. So uh, we are still doing the pre-sale and it will be shipped out on the third week of January. That's what we're assuming. Third week, okay. Yes. Um, as we mentioned before, we are talking to various um, vendors who can distribute in um, different countries, different continents. So you guys don't have to pay any extra for customs and whatnot. So we are in the process of trying to figure that out. It's just things are being super delayed due to COVID. Yeah. Yes, because pretty much all the bookstores are some business that we dealt with and they're not in business anymore. So things been a little difficult, but then we are in the process of figuring things out. Right. And thank you guys for your patience for those of you that did get it and are waiting. Peter, Peter I think we should do something fun. Once sure. we get a big batch of your book, maybe sure. we can do something like a giveaway. Oh, absolutely. I did yeah. one giveaway on my Instagram. I uh, saw that recently though. Yeah, it was open to international. I shipped them out recently. I was doing that also to, to generate money for funding to uh, donate to an animal conservation group that I'm a part of, uh, and that worked out pretty cool. Uh, but definitely working with you and, and you know, anybody else at Superani to do giveaways, I'm very much open for. So anybody out there, who you, if you guys aren't following you know, Superani or uh, me, consider it so you can actually get a part of some of these giveaways in the future. All right, so the time is up, Peter. Oh, this is great. Well, this was half an hour. So <laughs> uh, I got the start of the commission going. So I need to kind of still establish refinements and details. And I'll be doing a full watercolor pass on this thing. Um, but here we have 30 minutes to sketching. So. <laughs> All right, so do we get to see on your Instagram once it's done? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'll be posting this on my Instagram, Peter Han Style. And I'll also make sure to, um, you know, send it out anywhere else I need to, whether for, you know, Lim and Superani crew. And, uh, and of course, the person who's getting the commission, if you guys can share it, great. But the Instagram is Peter Han Style, J N Style. Awesome. Thank you so much, Peter. Of course. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Awesome. Peter, are you joining us for the art jump tonight? Yeah, I will be. Let me switch it over to my other camera real fast. But, uh, yeah, I'll be part of the um, art jump tonight. I believe it's 7 30 p.m. Pacific. 7 30, yes. Yeah, so I'll be there. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank cool. you so much, Peter. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. All right, guys, so we have Eliza, if she's ready. I think she's making her way back. Hi, Eliza. Hi, sorry. It's okay. Am I here? Need it. <laughs> All right. And I don't turn on my camera here. How are you? I'm well. It's been a little crazy day. It's raining today, so everybody's in the house. <laughs> Sometimes it can get tough. How are you doing? I'm good, good. Right, so whenever um, you're ready, so what are we gonna show today? Um, okay, so I was thinking of doing um, like a quick illustrative piece with a figure, which I think is something that I can fit in like um, a short amount of time uh, with some detail, hopefully. And um, this will show, you know, something from scratch. Nice. That's great. So I'm going to pin your um, canvas. Um, mm -hmm. Before you start, can you quickly, quickly just show us which pen you're using? I think they'll really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, of course. Awesome. So yeah. here we go. All right, let's see if this works. Which one is the best way? <laughs> I'm just trying to position the camera, right? There you go. All right, um, so 
Here. I have to do this. I usually work at a little bit of an angle. I don't know, there's just um, a habit. So kind of like the main tools I use are um, for, I mean, for drawing, for pencil drawing, are my pencils, which I have two favorites now. Uh, this is a, a point Five one is point seven, uh, like HB, and uh, I think this one is two B. And this is a blending stump stick, whatever you want to call it. It's just roll the paper. I'm sure, you know <clears throat> plenty about this one already. And uh, an eraser that I can, uh, you know, I use. I kind of sharpen one end, give the other one blunt. So that's usually what I use for pencil drawings simple and um, uh, what else this will be for pencil you know for other media I have like a different tool set like for inks I have um, different brush pens and then my uh, like my more precise ones in markers and whatnot sometimes right. water. in this case I'll just use these three Sounds <laughs> great. All right. So um, why don't you draw? If there's any questions, should I just read them to you? Sure. Yeah. Let's do awesome. That. We'll do that. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see. Cause like I have this thing in my face. I don't know if you can see this literally <laughs> in my face right now. Um, it's not flipped, right? Does it look? Is it in my? I don't know why. I just see it flipped. Um, you're right-handed to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it's just an interesting thing that happens, I guess. With <laughs> but yeah, I'll do a little girl. I want to do kind of like a fairy tale um, scene. I'm, I was thinking like Thumbelina. I love fairy tales. I've been reading into them this year. Maybe you've noticed my Instagram feed. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but it's been that kind of a year. I think I'm just like, my mind is wandering into like fantasy land a lot because of just you know too much news and whatnot it just really gets to me yeah it's like my way of escaping um eliza do you yeah. have that software open you know the software that we me and victor mentioned yes yeah um if you want you can kind of zoom in because due to some oh, resolution yeah. yeah it's looking a little too light okay if I can do that. I can also lower the camera itself. Mm -hmm. so let me see what I can do. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Just give me one second. Mm -hmm. It'll get darker, I promise. This is just, I kind of will outline lightly. Mm -hmm. Great. Initially. But, um, okay. Where would that be? Is it a focus? No, it's not a focus. Um, hmm. It's like a little zoom in and a plus and minus sign, and then there will be like a little button. Oh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. I see it. And then you can use that little circular thing to move to left to right. Okay. Up and down. I think that's good, right? It looks good-ish. It didn't change. I don't oh, think, no. Why is it doing that? It keeps not changing things for me. Remember, even the flip didn't work. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Not it's it's okay. No, what I'll do is this. I'll just manually put it down. This will I'm sure do it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Manual is the best way to go. <laughs> Seriously, apparently it's the only way for me. <laughs> I don't have much choice this year. <laughs> And I'd be like, did you manage to flip your camera? I was like, yeah, I manually did it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A lot of that this, this weekend. Oh, that's okay. As long as it works. Yes. Um, and, okay. I guess um, I can talk a little bit about my process. I kind of, I approach things without, like, guides just straight ahead. Like I think a lot of the Superani artists do that. 
maybe that's why we get along so well. <laughs> um, it's it's just it feels more natural to me. I mean, I, I I'm not I'm always telling people to like just follow whatever their gut tells them to. So when I try to do guides, things just looked way too stiff for me. And uh, I just couldn't break that stiffness until I started working more with ink. And uh, this method of just like, not, just trusting your lines and not really erasing much. Just put a mark down and go with it. Even if it doesn't feel right, like things can always change later on. But I just trust in line is something I developed in college. I didn't have that before. I was a very slow artist. I would just take a long time with things. It's not bad, again, but I wanted to be faster. And setting animation definitely taught me how to approach things a little faster. Um, so I have some references too that I'm using. I have about like three or four. So I'm pulling different elements out of them. I'm not really copying any of them. So like I like a face from one. I'll just kind of ref quickly reference that. Then I will bounce to different one has like a nice pose or the arms. And it's really, it's like, I, I didn't really um, plan for the references. I'm not like really looking in this case for something very specific. I just liked some images and when I pull them together, like kind of a little story came to my mind. Like, oh, I could do this if I combine them this way. Yeah, that makes sense. So a lot of times I just like things how they look and if they fit an idea to have, I would use them. If not, I would just um, mix something on the spot. So one question from Alan, how old were you when you exit, uh, um, exit animation and started entering traditional drawing media? Uh, well, that was last year is when I quit my um, job of 10 years at Pixar. And, but I, I mean, if that, it all overlaps, you know, I was still drawing a lot there. I was going to live drawing classes. I was, um, you know, I was just obsessing over drawing, <laughs> purely from the fact that I wasn't really doing it either. Um, I just have to do it. It was like a niche that I had to scratch. And um, the more I had, the more I did it, it became clear that this is something I wanted to dedicate more time to. Um, so, you, you know, drawing never really went away, if that's what you were asking. But it just became more and more, um, prominent in my life. I went full circle. I, I was initially going to uh, go to like the Bulgarian Academy of Art. That was my goal when I was in high school. And then uh, I, changed, <laughs> I changed my mind in, like 11th grade. I was like, you know what? I, I also love animation. I want to pursue that. And um, started researching colleges to see what what options I had you know in Gary and Europe and then in the US which I ended up in um, that's when I started like focusing on animation and now I'm like full circle back to drawing and it's great <laughs> I love it the best time ever. You still do a lot of um, 
work, like commissions and、um, contracted work. Yeah, yeah.、Mm-hmm. Of course.、Um, not so much this year because I, I just can't. I physically don't have the time. So there's been a lot of really fun projects that I had to say no to. But typically, yes, <laughs> that'll be the goal. Is to just、uh, freelance and、uh, also focus on my own stuff, like my own projects, like my films. I'm still animating.、Um, Books. It's really. I mean, I, I've had, now that I'm in on this side of things, <laughs> and that being you know full time, like nine to five on a nine to five schedule.、Uh, like, I I just can't. I don't even remember how what it felt like. But I remember being terrified of not having that job security. It's just interesting to see like the perspective. Whatever you are into, you kind of feel like this is the world. That's it until you change things. And you're like, oh, okay, well, that that wasn't that scary. So yeah, I'm just quickly here, kind of placing shades just to kind of get a general design that I like. Let's、see how much I can fit. How much do you have? Like half an hour? Um, uh, you right now you have about fifteen minutes to go. Fifteen?、Oh、yeah.、Goodness. Okay. I went fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I just start shading them. So, a question from Kevin: When I'm using a smudge stick, I have a hard time getting an even value in large areas. Do you have any tips on that?、Uh, I think it depends on the pencil you use. I use that's why I prefer、um, these mechanical ones because when and also not very very soft lead because.、Um, You know, softer lead tends to smudge a little more, and this one has enough graphite on it already that I, I can get very dark values just by layering the pencil and this. Actually, I don't need like a six B,、um, or even like a seven,、um, and you avoid that smudgy mess, kind of like everything getting cloudy. So I'd say you know if if you want to just figure out for yourself, I would say try、um, a pencil that's a little harder or lead, whatever you're using. See、uh, with the blending, like if you get it dirty enough, you can even. I mean, I've seen people dip this in like graphite powder and、uh, smudge that way, and just try to you know pack it down to get like a nice dark value, and from there. You can like I'm doing right now. You can like layer more, smudge again, get a darker value, and go from there. And then this is you know I mean it doesn't really go anywhere. Okay, I'm doing. I'll be right back. Can I have a debug? Sure. Smudgers. <laughs> Do a lot of back and forth with the references. There's a lot of you know. There's a lot of detail that I just wouldn't be able to come up on my own. And when you get very specific, I think things get start to get really organic. It's really about just observing the hell out of things and just like find, you know, the detail in the detail. But also, as Peter said, 
is important to also keep kind of a bigger picture so you don't get lost in those details. And then things to start um, get detached from each other. And you, you want, you know, you're looking for coherence, you're looking for the general balance overall. Sorry, that's my oven. I've been cooking all day. <laughs> Can you see well? I'm not sure if it's like blurry or yeah. Okay. Um, it's not the most high resolution, but we can still see the details. It's nice. Okay. okay. Um. A question from Art of Wicked. How long does it take you on average to make a book? What's that? How long does it take you on average to make a book? Um, it take well, the first one I made, because I, I had no idea what I was doing. It took about six months to compile the work and um, to see like what what fits, you know, a lot of things got cut out, cut out. I think now I'm working a little faster because I know what I'm going for. But then um, the new book I made, um, sorry, the new book I made, that was a lot of writing. And uh, that took a long time. <laughs> so I'm not a very good writer. So that took, oh gosh, I'll, I want to say seven, eight months. Another question from Stunt. Can um, Eliza, will you uh -oh. make another book? Another book uh, that's been um, published uh, in your Instagram? Sorry, can you repeat that? Would you consider to make a book um, that you, the with the photos that you've been posting on your Instagram? Yes. Yeah, it's coming. That'll be the second volume of my first book. And it'll be the second and only <laughs> and the final volume. And then uh, after that, I'll just, um, I wanted to make different, different theme books after that. So there's a little more uh, like storytelling for each one. So Another question, that. what, oh, sorry. No, 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 I was just gonna say, I'm just um, there in here, if you're wondering what's going on. Mm -hmm. So um, what advice on portrait? Um, what about portrait, like how to do it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's, I think there's better portrait artists than me <laughs> to ask, but the way I would, again, it's just, for me, at least when I do um, something, I, I have to get resemblance, damn, like, you know, nail down. It's all about um, like really, really studying the source and not just uh, going, like studying first for a long time, just figure out what makes a person's face, what it is. Even with, I mean, the, the, I think the hardest thing for me is like drawing my kids because I, I'm so used to their faces that sometimes I'm like, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what makes them them, but uh, in the same, in the same time, I think because I've drawn them enough, I also have learned that um, there's like some things that are so specific to them that um, I can improvise, I can, um, like caricatures and features and still kind of get that essence down. Um, but here, hold on. I'm gonna go ahead with around here. 
Um, I have a really good book that I just um, had the honor of getting and I don't see it. Okay, I'll, I'll write it down later for specifically for portrait work. It's a really good book by a fellow San Francisco artist. So yeah, I mean, just study your source material. That's always the best way and a lot of live drawing always helps you with that it's, that's like a, right now I mean it's hard but when you can definitely go for it Question from Kevin, what projects did you work on with Pixar and which one is one of your favorite? Uh, yeah, okay. So I started on Cars 2. I think that was my very first big project, my very first feature. Then, um, what was after that? That was Brave. That was a big jump too. <laughs> Going from Cars to, to Brave. I felt like I had no idea how to animate. This is, this is really difficult. Um, and after that, I did Monsters. Sorry, yeah, Monsters University. Yeah. And um, then it was, gosh, was it Inside Out up there? I think it was. Um, and after that was Coco. So I skipped a few, like I skipped Cars 3, skipped Dory. Um, and the reason is like a lot of times things just overlap. So there's different teams working simultaneously. And you get to uh, pick and choose where you, you want to go. I mean, you don't always have the choice, but if you do, that's what happened. I also worked on um, Domi, Shiri's Bao. I think it might have been my very last thing I worked there um, before I left. And it was so much fun. So I think my favorite one was probably Inside Out. So I got to work with both Pete, Doctor, and uh, Tony Fatili. Seems like a dream come true. I miss it. <laughs> I miss everybody. I think we were with two kids and it was just, it became really, really difficult for me. And also that this drawing is um, something I, I want to focus on more. I, I just felt like I was um, not being able to do a lot of projects I wanted to do on my own simply because I didn't have any time. It's kind of like a bittersweet thing. But I'm very excited for the new projects that are coming up. Amazing. So I'm still a fan. All right, so it's kind of, uh, let me pull out a little bit so you can see a little better. Here's uh, the, the kind of general shape things I want to do. So the idea, right, was some you know, which is like just tiny. Um, so for scale, since I don't have anything really I don't have any background I don't have the story around it the first thing I thought of for scale was like okay something big like a flower or a leaf that she can carry just to show that clearly it's either like a giant plant or she's small and then once I actually start with the background you know maybe add the grass or bugs or whatnot then you'll see that she's in fact uh, like a tiny thing So these are things that, you know, I'm very conscious, you know, it's all very deliberate 
decision making just so that um, you get your idea quickly down. It's clear. Um, these are things I picked up from animation, I think, more than anything else. Clarity, especially silhouette. You know, quickly getting a pose that feels appealing. It is interesting to look at. Um, it's believable, you know? Like she's, she's picking up something that's pretty light, but since she's tiny, she's carrying on her shoulder. She's not just kind of twirling it, twirling it around like a, you know, very light thing. So things like that, you know, it's, it's kind of right now is almost subconscious, but if I had to break it down, this will be the thought process. And um, my new book that I go into detail about these things, like that's exactly what I talk about, like all the decision-making that feels uh, almost a given at this point. But um, I really had to like sit down, and be like, okay, what, what is important for something to look right without um, putting way too much, like going over, over working something, which I think it's, it's a skill uh, on its own is to learn how to do like a minimal amount of work with the most impact. Awesome, Eliza. So you, the time is up, so you can wrap up oh, whenever okay. you're ready. Sure. Okay. Cool. I'll finish this later, and I'll, I'll show you guys. Yeah, it. that'll be really great. Um, are you joining in for the art jam tonight? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll be there. This is super right. fun. I love talking to everybody. So. <laughs> so um, after Eliza, we're gonna take thirty minute break, and at four thirty p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're starting off with Miss Jisoo's live drawing. After that is Tong Ho, Kyungjun, Che Gwang, Nicholas Nimri from Beijing, and Kim jung -gi. And after that, 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we're going to do Art Jam with Peter, Han, Eliza, Kim jung -gi, Miss Jisoo, Tong Ho, Kyungjun, Che Gwang, and Nicholas. So yeah, Eliza, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, I'm, I'm going to... Here you go. Thank you, Eliza. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope this was fun. Yes, it was super. So I'll see you soon. Yeah, okay.